Coming up next on All About Android, it's me, Jason Howell, Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and our guest, Chris Lacey, developer of Action Launcher and recently Swirl Walls, brought Chris on to join us for the whole show, but also to get his thoughts on a big change happening for developers in the Play Store. Google's giving more revenue to developers. It's definitely good for, for developers, and Chris has some thoughts to share. Plus, a new Nest Hub with sleep tracking capabilities, the Asus ROG phone 5, a gaming device with a whole lot of battery and a whole lot of RAM. Flow reviews the budget 5G device. It's the ZTE Blade X1. Walmart's on brand is back. We've got your email and a whole lot more next on All About Android. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Expand your skills or launch yourself into a career with IT. Visit itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions for the lifetime of your active subscription. And use code AAA30 at checkout. Hello, welcome to All About Android, episode 516, recorded on Tuesday, March 16th, 2021, your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. Hi, guys. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. And good to see you down in the bottom right corner of the screen, if you are indeed watching the video version. Welcoming back to the show. It's been a while. Chris Lacey. Awesome developer uh, of apps that you've probably installed because you watch this show, Action Launcher. We talked about Swirl Walls a couple of weeks ago. In fact, I'm running yes, it on my phone right now. Yes, dethroned. Don't let's come on. Remember, it dethroned the Google Wallpapers app. So, Chris, we have to give you a little round of applause. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Thank Good you. job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good to be back. <laughs> Yeah, it's great to have you back. And, um, you know, I don't know that I expected like a wallpaper style app from you as your next thing. And then when I installed it, I was like, OK, I'll give this a spin. I kind of reached the point of of like not really caring much, whatever my wallpaper was, was like, yeah, whatever, like I don't care anymore. Um, but I've really <laughs> enjoyed it because it's it's like you can like obviously there's a lot of variability and there's some really colorful ones uh, that, that, you know, will work for some people, but I can find some muted ones that still kind of have that, like, uh, I don't know, it has some nice energy to it when you're swiping around and everything. I really like what you've done with it. Yeah. Um, I, I think you've actually inadvertently touched on a, a few interesting points there, but, um, the, the biggest thing that I enjoy about Swirl Worlds and, and I agree that it's pretty it's not the most exciting category to, you know, to develop in if people hear about it, but there is still a lot of scope for innovation. And the thing I enjoy most about it is it just makes your phone feel more responsive and, uh, and, and, and fun. Like we look at our wallpaper a hundred plus times a day. And if you can do something that brings a, you know, a micro session of delight, as I describe it, uh, you know, and it costs you nothing, uh, you know, to, to use it oh. in that sense. It's just a, it's just a fun thing to do. So, so yeah, it's been a, a fun app to develop and uh, I'm, I'm very uh, ex heartened that you're, that you're enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I'm, I'm actually enjoying it a lot. And uh, I did give it at kind of the, the walkthrough on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so we kind of, you know, walked, walked through just the different avenues. Like I really like the uh, kind of the, the, the one color or the two color approach it's just there's enough variability in there. It would be easy to look at this and be like, okay, so there are swirly colors. Like, what's what's the deal? And then when you get in there and you start customizing and everything, you realize there's a whole lot of variability to it. So uh, I am a fan. I, I'm already a fan of your work, but I'm definitely a fan of Swirl Walls as well. Uh, we did not bring you on, though, to talk all about Swirl Walls. I thought of you immediately um, <laughs> when I heard about this top story. And so why do we why do we just not really you know we'll just cut to the chase right now Burke I mm -hmm. hope you're ready it's time for the news I got nothing except the fact that <laughs> thank you Google for helping all the developers except for Epic <laughs> oy, 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 that's, oy. Okay That's true Give it all away yeah. Burke that's true. These 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 uh, changes wouldn't really apply to Epic, at least not now. Maybe there was a time that it would have applied to Fortnite, but definitely not now. So I saw the news 
that uh, that Google has announced some changes to the percentage that it will take from apps in the Play Store. And basically, this is how it's this is how it's going to roll. Uh, it's forever since Android Marketplace was a thing from from what I can remember. It's always been a 30 percent cut that Google takes on revenue from apps. Now, that's you know, if you charge for an app up front, if you have in-app purchases, which definitely came later in the development of the Play Store, but still that would count. 30% of that going to Google, they had their reasons, same as Apple. Apple had their reasons to, you know, uh, it's distribution, it's promotion, it's all, all of these reasons to justify the 30%, not to mention the fact that the other guys are doing it too. So that makes it really easy to kind of, you know, have it stay on course. Well, now Google has announced that it's going to be 15% cut going to Google on the first $1 million in revenue for a developer each Year. I don't know if that's tied to the app or if that's tied to the developer. Uh, maybe you know the difference there, but 15% uh, only on the first million dollars of revenue. Beyond that, within that month, then it will switch to 30%, but that won't apply to the first million dollars. Am I right in that? Yeah, my, my, my sense is it's essentially a tax bracket. Uh, so once, it, once you hit that million dollars, then any dollar after that, uh, Google uh, reverts back to taking 30%, but up to uh, that million dollars, then it's just the the 15% cut. Okay, and um, and I, I had to do some thinking on this because all the percentages and everything. It was I'm easily confused when it comes to math. Um, is it uh, the kind of thing where if it's like you are a developer, obviously you have multiple apps, you sell multiple apps. Is it per developer or per app that this applies to? Do you, do you have any sense of that? My sense is it's uh, per developer account. Um, okay. So uh, in in my case, for instance, um, Action. So I have my Action Launcher company, which uh, houses Action Launcher and historically has had other apps uh, like uh, Link Bubble and Action Dash, which uh, I've I've since sold. But they they're all under the one developer account. Whereas uh, my new app Swirl Walls is. Uh, a different developer account, and that's not just because I was preempting this announcement. <laughs> that, that that's actually for uh, for boring re legal reasons because I needed to set up a new legal company uh, to mm. to release Swirl Walls. Um, so, uh, you know, in a you know absolutely wonderful world, um, then you know where Swirl Walls and uh, Action Launcher both earned you know nine hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars, then I would only pay fifteen percent for each of them because they're separate companies. Mm. But oh, my wow. figures are okay. nowhere near that, to be clear. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, understand. Understand. I understand that. Um, but that's an interesting point that you make. Like, is that? I mean, obviously, you didn't do this intentionally, right? Like, you have your reasons for doing it. I could, however, see people doing this perfectly, like, for that very reason, right? Like, oh, the, yeah. you know, I make this app over here, and it definitely passes that $1 million mark. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new company and make another app over here and get as much as well, I can out of that until that but hits. But that's, how, that's you, you, how all businesses work. You find ways to game systems right. and you, you spin up shell companies and things like that. So that makes sense. You, you, you figure out how to work in the system, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, the, the only thing you would lose in doing that is uh, – there's the sort of developer listing in Google Play. Uh, so, and, and I lose this at the moment. So if you go to uh, Action Launchers listing and then think, oh, I wonder what else this developer's done, Swirl Walls is right. not listed in there. Um, uh, but okay. I think most developers would uh, would take that if it means they're going to keep 15% of, uh, of extra yeah, I think, revenue. Yeah, I think, I think the, the, the cost-benefit analysis there works in the money favor, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. And, and, you know, a developer that has, you know, this company over here that's making millions upon millions of dollars probably has enough uh, mindshare, clout, whatever, to – uh, to feel comfortable about opening a business over here to do that with and and know that the right people are going to also find that app over there as well. Whereas other developers, it might get lost in the noise. It might get lost in the shuffle, uh, perhaps. I mean, it does assume uh, that you are mostly monetizing via the Play Store, of course. If, if you've got an app, right. uh, an app that monetizes via ads or um, – 
or something like that, then there's there's it's not something you would likely look at. Uh, but if you're a game developer, then I think it would probably make sense to to you know spin up a different company for a subsidiary for each company and uh, yeah and and try and take that extra fifteen percent. I, I I'd be curious what Google are going to uh, sort of do if anything around that. But uh, look so at, at, a, at a high level, I, I think the the news is is pretty exciting for developers. I, I certainly feel that the uh, the more money that goes to uh, developers and the less to, uh, you know, 1.4 trillion valued Google and 2.1 billion trillion valued Apple, uh, the better. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Of course. Now, and it's um, also a way to, I just wanted to add, I feel like this is yeah. also a way to hold those really big publishing companies. I mean, to, to take a cut of their profits because, an indie developer coming in and and making apps and not necessarily reaching that million sales. Maybe, maybe they make only $1,500. Like I feel, you know, they're already probably getting taxed on that locally Hmm, as earnings. So just kind of let them keep it. If it's just an indie thing, I definitely like that this is going after sort of the big publishing houses that, you know, are, use the app stores as a platform but aren't really maybe contributing to it i think i feel like that's that's what this was about maybe well i think what this was if i'm being entirely cynical uh, and i'm also extremely yes, happy about it but I, I i think the the google blog post contain the answer um, that Google's motivation for doing this because, and to, to quote them, it says with this change, 99% of developers globally that sell digital goods and services with play will see a 50% reduction in fees. I think you can absolutely expect that line to be uh, that that line is there and that line will be repeated mm-hmm. many a time when Google are testifying in front of, you know, house House subcommittees mm-hmm. and the Arizona State Senate and uh, Europe, the European Union, and and you know, pick your political um, uh, stage. The I think this is the, it's absolutely fair to to think that a large part of this is PR because Google and Apple are finally coming under pressure thanks to uh, you know companies like Epic and and Spotify to. Uh, to stop these rent seeking practices where that, that sort of forbid, uh, developers from directly, uh, in Apple's case, e- even informing people that, uh, that you need to subscribe on, on the web or uh, on another service. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I definitely think there's, there's a big PR part of this. Yeah, I would completely agree. And there's, and there's movement, at least here in the U S you know, uh, the news a couple of weeks ago, uh, Arizona has a bill or an amendment, an amendment to a bill going through that would allow, at least for developers based in Arizona, and it may, might play out state by state here in the U.S., but uh, would allow developers in Arizona to uh, effectively use their own marketplace or their own cash system or, or payment system uh, instead of going with the official for- payment system. I think it's also Arizona residents. Oh right, I, yes, I, I may right. be okay. wrong on that. Yeah, um, yeah. So, it's, so it's, it's pretty. It's localized the case for Arizona. Arizona developers. That mm-hmm. that's right. But um, yeah. But yeah. So I I, I think that's uh, I I certainly have it. I'm on the side of Epic, whereby you know, if if Epic want to have a direct relationship with their customer, and you know you you configure a credit card, then Epic should be allowed to do that. Like we're we're talking about platforms where, in Apple's case, it's 1.65 billion active devices. Um, in Google's, it's over 2.5 billion active devices. These are just massive, massive platforms, and it's just mm-hmm. there are certain businesses that just can't survive with uh, an intermediary taking thirty percent for, you know, in, in Epic's case, like that's that's a credit card fee is is what uh, you know a credit card three is, fee is three percent. They they can't be losing twenty percent of their revenue. Then they're, they're not a console. These platforms, these are mobile platforms. They're the future of uh, you know. A connected world, and and yeah, I I really am in favour of uh, you know any and all attempts to uh, to try and allow developers more freedom to charge customers directly. And you were very prescient back in uh, 2016, mm-hmm. June 8th to be exact. You tweeted out 
I'd love to see app stores have 85, 15 rev split for all purchases, uh, purchase types up to a million dollars. <laughs> Keep that, taking that's somewhat money. uncanny, Get by the way. Smaller devs, bigger <laughs> cut. That's yeah, 2016. Have you asked Chris for Lacey. them to put your name there? I mean, again, we have receipts here. So really. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing it because of you, Chris. Good job. <laughs> well, there's a, a four year delay on the reading of my tweets then. But uh, no, uh, yeah, that, I, I, I definitely felt like felt about this as a quite strongly for a while um that how it like i just never saw it impacting google's bottom line that much to do it Mm -hmm. um and uh i I do think it's worth mentioning that historically um certainly at at the in, in the android market days the way google really got a lot of traction early was by uh they would take away this 30 percent of the they they would take the 30 percent cut but in the early days, up to twenty-five cents, or sorry, twenty-five percent of the of the one-dollar purchase actually went back to carriers. So Google made these deals where they would, um, so carriers were incentivized to sell Android devices because they got uh, you know a very meaningful percentage of every dollar directly spent on them. And over time, those deals have sort of gone down, and I, I, they were sort of always different splits per different carrier and, and and that sort of stuff. But I, I was certainly under the impression that I didn't think Google could just wave a, wave a magic wand and do this, um, reduce their fee because they had these these deals in place to share this revenue with oh. carriers. Uh, Apple, that's not the case. That's just pure money into uh, Apple shareholders' pockets. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I, I was – when Apple announced a sort of similar deal, I was curious if Google was going to follow. I, th- I kind of thought they would have to, um, but maybe not straight away. And, and, and that's kind of where we've ended up. Ultimately, yeah, that's where we ended up. Although with, the, with like you said, a, a pretty distinct, kind of seems subtle, but actually in reality, it's a pretty big difference, right? On the Apple side, it's up to a million dollars, 15%. Once a developer passes that fifteen that that uh, million dollar threshold, the entire amount is now considered a thirty percent fee. If if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that's that's how it is. Versus the Google method, which is that first million is still at the fifteen. It's anything beyond the million is at the thirty. So that ends up leaving a lot of extra money in the developer developer's hands. The way Google is implementing it versus versus Apple's method, which kind of changes the rule suddenly through. It's like yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah like Google, Google's implementation of this is, is far superior with it effectively treating it as a, as a tax bracket. So, uh, you know, yeah. Netflix oh. will get an extra $150,000. Um, but uh, whereas on iOS, you, you first of all, you have to apply for this program. And then, yeah, you if you're a developer who earns, you know, you're far better off earning selling only 990000 on the App Store than if you sold – uh, a million and five thousand, because suddenly then you would earn, you would lose three hundred uh, plus thousand um, dollars by just crossing that crossing that threshold. So that's a, that's a ridiculous mm-hmm. implementation detail that Apple have done there. But uh, you know, what can you do about that? I suppose it's better than what it was <laughs> prior to the change. And, and, and unless you're on that, unless you're lucky enough to be near that threshold, then you, then you're you're playing nervous games. I expect maybe you have to go in and bump your subscriptions to uh, three hundred dollars a month or something to try and keep you under that level for for the rest of the financial year. I I, I don't know. I think that's probably possible. Yeah, which would yeah. be a horrible use experience, obviously. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a risk for sure. Um, as a developer, it, oh, sorry, Flo, go. Look, I just wanted to sort of ask a, a question that just came to my mind because I was thinking about the Play Pass program, a thing that I'm still paying for, and now I'm paying four ninety nine a month for all those apps. And I guess I'm just wondering if overall, Chris, you see the Google Play Store as you already said, you know, this feels very much like a PR pl- ploy in a sense. But I do wonder if you feel like Google's generally more developer friendly um, than I guess Apple would be the only other platform. Yeah, I, I certainly do. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would clarify that it's it's not like I see it as just a PR move. I think it it's certainly it has multiple benefits, sure, yeah. but I think PR is a is a very uh, is a very big one. It's uh, very important to bring out. 
Yes, we got to let people yeah. know. Right sort now, of right now, it's is. very applicable. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but but yeah, look, I I, I think Google uh, is a certainly as, a, as an indie developer, Google's platform is far far superior uh, to develop for me. Um, and I think a lot of that comes down to the freedom that's allowed via the APIs. Like, uh, there's no such thing as a live wallpaper. To get back to Swirl Walls briefly. Um, on iOS, it's, it's just something that, that I can't even do. Uh, if you look at historically right. my apps, a- Action Launcher, not possible on um, on iOS. Um, what else? Link Bubble, not possible. Action right. Dash, not possible. So, so there, then, Chris, is, why does everybody make their apps iOS first? Because most ah. people aren't, aren't sort of... <laughs> Indie, indie developers. Most apps are funded by um, you know, larger companies that have taken on venture capital money. And yes, the, I'm thinking the about giant that, horoscope apps that we don't have on on Android, and and plus some other things that have come out. Cough, Clubhouse, cough. Yeah, so 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 Clubhouse is an obvious one. Cl- Clubhouse is quite unique in that they 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 seem pretty in bed with uh, A16Z, the uh, the VC firm, and 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 I think most. So. Uh, VC, most VCs are carrying iPhones. They, they want to use the app that they're funding. Um, and so that yeah. does lead to sort of lowest yeah. common denominator development. Uh, only sure. your Android app only uh, is cap- only includes features that the iOS uh, right. app also the Android has. Android so, is for the so in a way, <laughs> well, well, in a way, you, you, you have um, iOS holding Android apps back in, in, in that sense. Um, but uh, it works out well for me because there's more niches that, uh, you know, no one's going to, I don't, I don't think there are going to be too many people that, you know, raise tens of millions of dollars of, of VC money to try and explore the the outer rims of the Android ecosystem. But it's something I can poke around in. And if I find something mm-hmm. that, that uh, you know, I think is cool, then hopefully there's an audience that, you know, however many other people do, and, and that's enough to allow me to keep doing it, uh, you know, again and again. So yeah, it works out for me. Yeah, indeed. As a developer, do you feel like there is enough value there with what Google is providing through the Play Store um, for 15%, let's say, or what What would, like in a perfect world, like, or, or is it free? Like at a, at a certain point, I mean, obviously you would love, anyone would love to be able to put something in a marketplace like this and have it be free. But if Google has to take a cut, what are what are the uh, the benefits and the perks that they offer to you as a developer? What is that worth to you? Um, it's, I, I, I definitely think there is uh, a, a reasonable amount of value there, um, be, especially as it relates to um, anything you can do around per- reducing friction at purchase time is mm. is hugely beneficial. Um, if every app suddenly started saying you need to enter your credit card to to buy your you know five dollar in app purchase, uh, the vast majority of people would never complete that purchase. Um, that said, I think that it's quite likely that there's a, an opportunity for I don't know PayPal, Stripe, pick pick whoever that, for for them to release a, uh, a mobile payments uh, platform so that. A, you know, developers could offer a button, you know, next to next, their purchase screen could offer, you know, pay with Google Pay, pay with PayPal, and it's, you know, 15% cheaper. And if, if PayPal could just make that, you know, essentially as close to one click as possible, I could see that being really successful and I could see Google not, uh, not loving that. Um, it, it's hard for me to speak too much about um, what I consider sort of a fair a fair cut because I really have no idea these days how much of let's say that fifteen percent actually goes to Google. What I, um, yeah. because of you know for a few reasons. Partly what I was saying before, I, I think there's still a portion of it that goes to carriers, and I'd be fine to uh, to cut them out of the loop at this point. Thank you. But um, the but I think at a high level, like the Android ecosystem is um, tremendously well supported. Um, and I think there's, there is benefit in the like play protect and, and, and that sort of stuff, which, uh, you know, obviously costs money to run whether I, I, I do think there's a reasonable case to be made that, um, you know, Google are kind of going to do that anyway, because they make their money from Android, not just through the play store. They, they make it from the, you know, the Google search bar on, on everyone's home screen and, uh, and, and Chrome, um, and and any uh, increasingly other ways, you know, as far as like Google storage with photos and Gmail and, and whatnot. So Google have lots of ways of monetizing Android. I at, at a high level, I'm not 
I'm pretty happy. I'm certainly far happier with 15% than, uh, than 30%. As, as you said, everyone would be happier, <laughs> you know, if it was yeah. closer to, you know, 3%, 5%. But, uh, look, I, I'm not going to be jumping up and down too much uh, about 15%. That's, uh, that, that's, that's far better than 30. Absolutely. Yep. And that's it right there. So, uh, good. Okay. Well, um, you know, and, and I mean, obviously we, we talk about, uh, support your devs all the time on this show. Always, is, always. This is a, this is a change that Google has made that immediately supports devs at least, yeah, at least a substantial At least amount, 15% uh, more. more. At least 15% more. Well, it, you could, be, we could, I would, no. I would, it's not immediately. It's still over, uh, over that's a true. quarter of the year away kicking in, which it seems odd to me. I wonder if that's uh, sort of yeah. when a few of their larger carrier deals sort of expired and they, they could mm, do it. That's pure speculation. Yeah. But it, it does seem like they could have done this said from April 1st. But uh, look, we, we, you know, my tweet was 2016. I think we can wait a few more months. It's, uh, it's, it's coming. <laughs> You've resigned yourself to wait another three months because we just really have no choice. July 1st, 2021 is the date that it kicks into gear. Cool. Awesome discussion. I love getting your viewpoints on that uh, on that story, and I knew I knew that would be uh, I knew that that would be a great discussion. So thank you for that. Uh, let's take a break. Thank the sponsor of this episode of All About Android, and then we'll get into some hardware news. We've got some interesting stuff in the rundown coming up shortly. But first, this episode of All About Android is brought to you by IT Pro TV. You already know what it's like to tune into a channel or a, a, a location on the web that just shows the video content that is dialed in exactly for people who love technology. Well, IT Pro TV is video content that is dialed in exactly for people who love IT or who are interested in learning more about IT. IT Pro TV has seven studios to do it in, as well as you know, just amazing hosts. They're fun, they're entertaining. Uh, IT Pro TV is the best online IT training platform and right now, one of the most important aspects of IT, obviously, it's cybersecurity. We're hearing about it all the time. Businesses can be vulnerable. They need strong IT leadership. And that's so that they can you know, deal with the threats so that the businesses themselves can stay up for success. The best way for businesses to achieve this is by keeping up with industry trends and strengthening the skills of IT leadership, getting educated on exactly what's happening right now. The IT Pro TV business platform has been developed from the ground up to support online IT training uh, for both IT leaders and employees. It's part of the ACI learning portfolio of audit, cyber, and IT learning solutions for consumers and enterprises. And you can actually access over 5,800 hours of just amazing video training online. It's all online on demand. It offers courses on malware detection, cryptography, penetration testing, uh, end user security awareness, and a whole lot more. 5,800 hours more, actually. Individuals can also launch or advance their careers in cybersecurity realm. Uh, IT Pro TV is the only official video training partner for CompTIA, uh, so you know you're in the right place for getting the right certifications. And actually, you know, we're, we're middle of March right now. It's Cisco month at IT Pro TV. They're going to be featuring their 12 Cisco courses, including CCNA, CCNP, CCT, Encore, SLED, and NRC. And you can check out their webinar with Cisco award winner, David Bombal. It's called Get Hands-On with Cisco. It's available now. You can get that on demand when you go to itpro.tv slash webinars. And then for even more insight about IT, you can check out their podcast. It's called Technado uh, with Don Pizzette the host of that show, featuring industry guests and IT news recaps for a deeper dive into the IT realm. IT Pro TV is also helping communities. Last year, they actually served more than 30 COVID-impacted educational institutions with free training. That is awesome. With over 225,000 members, you know that they will have the knowledge and the support that you need to further your IT career. It's all right there for you. Go to itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid 
Make sure and use the code AAA30 when you go there. You'll receive 30% off all consumer subscriptions. That's itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid. And again, use that code AAA30. That's how you're going to get the additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription. It also tells them they heard about it through this show, and uh, we we like it when that happens. <laughs> IT Pro TV, build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. And we thank IT Pro TV for continuing to support the network. We've, they've been with us for years. It's great to have them along, and uh, I love what they're doing. So ITPro.tv slash all about Android. All right, it is time to dive into some hardware. Let's do it. Wow. I knew wow, this. Wow, wow. Yeah, I knew this was right up your alley, Flo. Well, I got to tell you, it definitely was a surprise to open my inbox this morning and see a Google email with the exact same sort of announcement as all the all the websites. Uh, this morning, today, uh, this week, Google announced the new second gen Nest Hub with the integration officially of what we have previously referred to as Project Soli. It is now just Soli. It is Soli. No longer a project. Soli. It's a product, yeah. not a project. Soli, Soli. <laughs> That's hard to say. So we've got um, this new Nest Hub, second second generation, has a seven inch edgeless glass display. Uh, Google's promising that its 1.7 inch driver has 50% more base than that first gen Nest Hub. It's also gonna have the thread radio built inside for better smart home integration. Now that feature isn't live at launch, but Google has been working on this with different sort of things. So I imagine, Maybe they're going to try and do another like, hey, remember this uh, announcement. Now, the Soli radar chip, that's like the big, that's the big catching point here. You can see it in, or you can't see it, but it's located in the top right corner. It lets you do music control, a snooze alarm. These are all very similar gestures that you could do to the last Nest, um, it was the Nest Max. It's really the really, really big one that came out, the second gen version of the Google Home Max. That kind of had some of these motion gestures built in. Uh, this Nest Hub will also use sleep sensing abilities, or rather will offer sleep sensing abilities through Soli to analyze your sleep through movement, breathing, and any disturbances that come in the way. So that is very interesting. Uh, and now I need to ask Google if I can borrow one because I definitely want to test this. <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah, I'm interested in that too. Yeah, the radar can also sense body movements, both macro and micro. And coming from a person who just tested a baby camera uh, for a, a review that I wrote, I'm Ooh, very interested in the body movements because when it comes to baby monitor, for instance, you got to be able to do that little twitch. So which, which one were you looking at, Flo? Because I was literally in the market to uh, <laughs> overhaul my camera setup in my children's rooms. So, uh, I'm looking at the the Pampers Lumi, which is oh, made. Okay. It's Logitech, made by Logitech. We could talk yep. about that offline, but just as a side note, that's the one that I was looking at. It was so funny. Um, I went down just, I mean, this is, this is totally, I know we said we can talk about it offline, fine, but I'll say fine. it now. I went down a major <laughs> indoor camera IOT rabbit hole because I wanted to find, you know, cause my kids are two now. So that I'm less worried about the, you know, the, 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 the little movements and more about, are they trashing the room? That sort of thing. But, um, uh, <laughs> yes. I, but I got so, so I got so, uh, hell bent on finding a completely wireless indoor camera, like no plug, like I want to put it anywhere, like I wanted to have like a rechargeable battery, like that sort of thing. But like the Venn diagram of like wireless power plus Google Home Assistant integration, yeah, it, it just and then like you veer into like security camera zone, which is just too much because I still want the night vision and all. Uh, just so yeah, I yeah. just ended up getting, I just ended up getting the twenty five dollar wise the square cameras and I was going to say, like, yeah, yeah. So probably yeah. I still got to plug, I still got to plug them into the wall, but whatever, it's fine. I'll deal. Now this is totally Ron. This is totally relevant, um, to this Nest Hub announcement. I just want to finish off with a couple of little other things, which is that all that data I mentioned, the movement data, the sleeping data, that's apparently all synced with Google fit. So that's interesting. 
Um, the price for this Nest Top is 100 bucks, which is about $10 more over the first gen. Um, and the sleep sensing, apparently it launches with a free preview next year. Two yeah, next year. So it launches with a free preview. Oh, I'm sorry. Into and next I'm year to some undetermined point. Jason's production notes. So I do apologize. That was my that was my bad. Um, but I wanted to sort of launch onto the discussion that it's very interesting. So we're just talking about all these sleep sensing features. Like this seems to be the big like marquee. Look at this new feature we're introducing into this. Meanwhile, we're I feel like a lot of people are still at my level and Ron's level when it comes to these devices. And Chris, I would love to have you weigh in as well, which is that, yay, it's cool. All these new things are being added in, but I feel like people are still looking for a reason to put these in the home and, and just have them work nicely with everything, which, which might make having a special feature about them maybe hard to really like sell like sleep sensing, like a sleep sensing feature. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. if people are already freaked out about cameras, asking this thing to watch you while you're sleeping. <laughs> Literally I mean, stare at you. Although it, although it's not a camera they, and they specify no, or at least the art, the article that, but, but I think it's easy to look at it and, and think that it is right. It's the radar. So it, it, it can pick up on, on movement or the movement, the movement types that would be applicable to sleep sensing. So it can pick up on yeah. the chest moving or it could pick up on a twitching or, you know, you you suddenly cough. It could pick up on the, the sudden jerk of movement. So, when you, when so you wait, cough. Wait, you're telling that me that this Soli chip, which had a very difficult time allowing people to shuffle through songs that the original mm -hmm. demo in New York city is now going to tell me how well I slept last night. Maybe it's larger. I'm, dubious. I'm, I'm hoping dubious. it's larger. <laughs> I would like right? to like try this, this for myself. I'm. Uh, well, I think, I'm, I think I'm the only way you can the only way you can find out is if you try it for yourself. I mean, you can really yeah. apply it, but I don't have nearly enough knowledge about how the range of detection solely can have. But I've got to imagine that Google tested this before they brought it to market. Well, of course, and I'm just making a <laughs> cheeky comment about the Pixel Four and and all that. But it, but I but it is something that I consider con considering that's where I was introduced to Soli. Yeah, I mean, it it wasn't it wasn't uh, the feature that I think Google hoped it would be on the Pixel. Part of that, from what I remember hearing about it, and mind mind you, I'm still using the Pixel Four XL, so it has the Soli radar. I don't do a wow. whole lot of direct stuff with the Soli radar necessarily, but um, I mean, I mean, other than like when I reach for it in a dark room, the display turns on. That's like the only thing that I really really use it, uh, the the Soli radar for. But from what I remember. Uh, it had something to do with the fact that the Soli radar in the phone is small and so therefore less accurate. I have to imagine if they're putting it on, on a desktop mounted right. device the size of something like this, it's a larger sensor and uh, maybe that will improve things. We'll see. We'll have to find out. I'm willing to try it if they want to send me one. I was looking at this, though, because I have the original uh, Nest Home Hub in my kitchen. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll get this for the bedroom. And then I was like, no, I don't need this. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll tell you, I'm still um, – mine still has sopped up formula on it. So never Aww. was able to clean it. <laughs> And the wow, base of this wow, thing, wow. I think, is still fabric, which is just making me very like dubious. I'm, I'm like, we still on the fabric thing, but I guess if it's supposed to be in the bedroom with you, <laughs> yeah, right. That's why I, they wanted I, I, fabric. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see. Hopefully, I can get one in for review and and check out how accurate. But, but we've also talked about this before, like sleep data. For me, I'm not like I guess I'm. I guess I just don't I, really have a whole lot of use for sleep data. I don't I'm, know what I would do with that. I know when I wake I up never, in the morning, I had bad sleep. <laughs> I'm in the same boat as you, sir. Like I like like all the sleep data stuff. Like I just I because and maybe it's because I sleep well. Right. Yeah, so like I understand right. that if you I understand if you have issues sleeping or if all this sort of stuff, I can get it. So I don't want to hold anyone back on that. But like all this stuff, it's like, yeah, I'm fine. I don't need this. <laughs> oh god but i will tell you what i do need 
Uh, and that's and going back to my desire for wireless devices, mm-hmm. uh, wireless dongle for Android Auto, that's for sure. Um, so <laughs> we talked about it on the show a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, we talked about it a few months ago. Then we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. The A wireless dongle for Android Auto, which is available on Indiegogo, uh, which makes a wireless connection for your phone to talk to your car to use Android Auto with. Um, well, I guess I guess they've been watching the show because they announced yeah. that they're going to start start shipping to customers. Uh, There's no other awesome. explanation, Ron. They are definitely That's, watching the show because they announced this after we talked about it. That's really the, the only option there. So um, yep. they, they announced that the hardware uh, hardware should arrive in a week or two. Um, and they said some issues affected development that caused the delays. There was a Wi-Fi signal problem that needed to be fixed. Uh, there was also a world worldwide chip shortage, which impacted delivery as well, which I can attest to because for my uh, for my company, we needed to order some new chips and we could not find them anywhere because there's a chip shortage, which is very I frustrating. Thought, I thought you might have um, some insight into that. Yeah, actually, I mean, <laughs> We literally just yeah like and it's funny because right now the chip that we need we found one person who has like we found one place that has a lot of them and they're like doubling the price just because it's supply and demand and that's that, that's yeah. capitalism. Um, but anyway, so they dealt they had to deal with the worldwide chip shortage, um, but it will include a companion app for syncing and getting it running, um, and it will enable DPI uh, DPI switching to possibly fit more on those displays, which is fascinating. Um, so I don't know, I can't wait for this as. as I was literally looking for like a shorter USB cable to to because right now mm-hmm. I have a big long USB cable in my car. I'm like I need, it. but I'm like no, I'm getting my wireless thing soon. Let me wait until I get that. Um, and I'm very excited. Uh, Chris, uh, do you have Android Auto? Have you looked at this AA wireless thing? Do you have any any thoughts around Android Auto? We've been I've gotten very into it ever since I actually got finally got a car. So. Yeah, look, we've uh, one of my car, one of our cars has got it, and it's it's fantastic. It's unfortunately not the car that I drive uh, most of the time. So if I, I've been sort of researching this this morning, like if this product works, like if if it can uh, beam Android Auto to my car that otherwise that that has a, a display but otherwise will not be getting uh, an upgrade to Android Auto, uh, sign me up for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks I mean, interesting, it's, and it's. it's- it seems almost too good to be true. Yeah, and I have it to say, does. like uh, <laughs> the the walkthrough or this article that we have um, listed from Nine to Five Google shows the final hardware and looks really polished compared to. I mean, obviously they they polished up the hardware before before releasing it, but um, I just I think back to w- the uh, way the hardware looked when it was kind of developing and everything. Yeah. It was like, oh yeah, this is a cool idea, but wow, that looks kind of hacky and everything. And uh, now it looks like something that you kind of wouldn't mind, you know, taking yeah. space on your dash somewhere, you know? Or no, it, yeah. like looking at looking at the form factor of this, this will fit perfectly. There's like a little open space underneath In the all cubby. the- yeah, in the cubby, right? And, like cubby, I just, yeah. and that's and that's where the USB uh, port is, so it could just sit right there. You won't even notice it. I think it's. I think I'm very excited. This this is going to be really interesting. So nice. Yeah. I'm awesome. so excited for Ron the 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 car. The person. suburban the suburban dweller. Android Auto yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Ron is now officially on the Android Auto beat. I'll take it. it. Well, okay. here's a picture. What? Here's I um. You- I have a picture of the app. Actually, they have listed it in the Play Store. Oh, okay. Oh, what a nice, nice looking app. There, there it is. Yeah. Well, uh, it's nice funny because you, you need you need that app because you need something for the device to talk to. Like after building an IoT device and like so you like you need yeah. you, it, 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 you need that and like that's why Google has yeah. that's why Google made the home app is purely to set up all those devices and all that sort of stuff for the pairing and right. all that stuff. So right. yeah, this is very cool. Yeah. Right. Cool. Well, I can't wait for you to get it. It doesn't sound like you're going to be waiting very much longer, Ron. And uh, well, we'll I will have to do report- a check in. I will report that. Maybe I'll take some video. I'll show you guys how it yeah, plugs yeah. in. Roll it on the show. Yeah, do yeah, like do a, a review whole, of it because I mean, I'll I, do think a whole thing. I think there's yeah. demand for this for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, love it. Awesome. Uh, another device that probably not going to get for a review, although I would love to because I don't know the last time that any of the three of us, at least on this show, has ever had a, a ROG phone, the Asus ROG Phone 5. Um, and yet again, every time we talk about these phones, I can never remember whether I'm supposed to say ROG or Republic of Gamers, but I'll just stick with ROG. Uh, the f- fifth phone uh, is out, and it's not just one this time. It's a series of devices. Apparently, there was an embargo that suddenly lifted because 
out of the blue at the same time all of these different sites had reviews of the of the F series 5 phone um many of them talking about amazing battery life which makes sense the regular version of this device has a 6000 milliamp hour battery no no let me correct that has two 3000 milliamp hour batteries inside of it. Uh, so take it, you know, take your standard Android phone with the battery and then uh, you know, take the battery out of that and then grab another one, put it into one phone. That's what you have here with the ROG uh, phone five. So I said three devices, regular pro and ultimate. The pro has a detachable fan. <laughs> Don't know why it needs to be detachable, but that's interesting. It's called the Aero Active Cooler Five, and it oh, also that has is such a it's such a PC gamer thing. Sorry. It's yeah. Just... <laughs> so so I don't. Okay, so it has a detachable fan. Was but why why don't you want the fan to be on the phone? Why why detachable? No, for you your don't sweaty want it on the gaming phone all hands. the time. You only want it when you're gaming. When you need it. When you're, yeah. when you're in gaming oh, I overdrive. See. I you snap okay, on I that get phone, it. I wasn't that thinking fan. of that. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't Come on, thinking think like it. a gamer, Jason. Come no. on. I don't think of that as detachable. I think of that as attachable because its default well, way is not with a fan. Gonna, oh, I see what you mean. It's I an see attachable what you're saying. fan. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Anyways, it's a difference without a distinction without a difference. Um, it has a color display strip on the back. Yeah, and it's it does. kind of like a like a pixel matrix. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, like a dot matrix. They call it the vision display. So you can I want that. Yes, show alerts on it, but you can also like create and animate things on there to make it look cool or something. Yeah. Um, of course. And then there's an ultimate version, uh, which has 18 gigs of Ram, 18 gigs of Ram in a smartphone. Uh, we have officially, maybe we've reached it before now, but this, I feel like this is the first time I'm hearing about an 18 gig of Ram in a, in a single smartphone, 2.84 gigahertz Snapdragon 888. So that is a, it's a powerful beast of a Powerful device. or overkill? Well, that's a good question. Uh, Chris Lacey, what do you think of this race <laughs> to uh, to cram more RAM, uh, more RAM into these gaming devices? Is it overkill? I, I certain, certainly question like the uh, the validity or the the market uh, demand for a device like yeah. this. Uh, that's yes. my initial yes. reaction because. Um, like I recently got a, an Xbox Series X, and I also recently got the uh, the X Cloud Game Pass streaming service on my phone. So I can do that with my Pixel, and that's literally just you know, the same. Um, that's no more technically advanced than uh, than streaming a YouTube video, and the games that it's going to, uh, no matter what specs you put in a phone, it's not going to beat what is uh, rendering on Microsoft's server farm uh, with a, you know, an Xbox Series X game. So I, I'm, I'm sort of, I, I'm certainly not in the market for this. Um, <laughs> and I am in the market for, you know, I only recently joined the market of someone who thought, oh, maybe I'll play high-end games and just doing it via um, the Xbox Xbox ultimate subscription just seems a, a, you know, a far better way to do it to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Burke, uh, told me that he finally found some pictures of the fan so we can kind of wrap our head around it. Okay. All right. That looks at like attachable to me. <laughs> I, it's, I mean, it's also detachable, but when you know. I think of detachable, I think of like, you've got the body of the phone and you can pull out the fan. You know what I mean? It's, that's like, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, um, ugh, I don't even know why I'm why I'm dying on this hill on this matter right now. It's okay. Uh, it's all right, yeah, leave it for the ants. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, pretty powerful phone with a great battery. Uh, just don't know who really needs it. Like when I think, yeah, when I think of mobile gaming, I just I I don't know what mobile games are out there that are like really tapping into eight gigs of eighteen gigs of RAM. Um, maybe they exist. And like if I put it on my phone, it would slow to a crawl. But I haven't found that yet. So well, I don't know. I, I, going back to Chris's point, I mean, this continued like we ran into with the rugged phones. If you listen to all about Android or you watch mm -hmm. all about Android and you have a ROG phone or you consider yourself a, a phone gamer, please write in with your experience or send pictures because we don't believe you're out there. So <laughs> I don't. We want to believe. And here they yeah. come. Yep. Call to action, everyone. Call to action. 
Burke is pointing out that the highest end Samsung device has 16 gigs, and you might actually be right. And I didn't, I didn't uh, remember that. That that would be the Galaxy. Why would you X remember that? That's like not a Ultra common thing. 16 it's totally gig not. RAM. <laughs> And yes, indeed, the Ultra S21 Ultra does have a 16 gig oh, RAM Lord. option. So I forgot about that. Thank you, Burke. Um, okay, so it's a thing. And uh, next year, it's going to be 20. This is just how this works. Yep. All right. Uh, we aren't done with hardware. We have a whole lot more to talk about. You saw the... All right, and Flo, you have a device that you've been uh, you've been playing with uh, for a little while now. Tell us about it. Yeah. So, where is it over here on my desk? Let's see. Let me move all these papers. Let me move all this trash. All right. Wow. Um, Props. Okay. Prop comedy. Wait a, Wait a minute. Is she doing a bit? <laughs> doing a bit. So this is the ZTE uh, blade. It is a full of fingerprints. And I'm sorry, we are not doing a cool two camera setup because I changed some things in my room and that's just the way life is. Uh, but that's okay because there's plenty of really nice press shots that you can look at. And I'm going to do my best to describe it to you because you're probably listening to the audio of this anyway. So you guys remember when we got the the Pixel A devices how I think when Jason and I, you know, I think we were at Google IO when they gave us those phones and we were like, it looks and feels exactly like the high end pixel, except there's just something a little off about it. Right. It's missing that density. It's missing that right. like metal cage that it's in. I mean, this is just pure plastic. Um, this is a pure plastic phone. But the kicker about it is not necessarily what it's made of, but the fact that this is a $384 phone, to be precise, with 5G capabilities and specs that you can find in uh, some other slightly higher priced phones. And not only is this 5G capable, this is also capable of logging on to Verizon's MM Wave 5G network. We're going to get into that in just a bit. So I want to just talk about the specs first off. So on, on paper, everything sounds good, right? We've got a plastic body. It only comes in dark blue, a 6.5 inch um, IPS LCD display. So, you know, it looks great in person. It You can see it perfectly fine out in the sunlight. I played Pokemon Go for a couple days using this because I'm getting back into that. And it was perfectly fine at the highest setting. But uh, you're going to notice, obviously, that it's not the high-end, high-end displays that you're used to. Uh, 1080 by 2340 resolution. So that's what you're looking at for the screenshots. Um, overall, like I said, it's not a super like heavy phone. It's nice and light. Feels just exactly like the Pixel A series in terms of weight. So just nice and airy. Um, let's see what else we've got here. So we've got, I do apologize. My nose started dripping in the middle of this whole thing. So, and I threw my tissue in my bit. Oh, you I don't did. know where it is for now. The, the price you pay for comedy flow. That's <laughs> what yep, it is. Yep, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We Let no one question your dedication. <laughs> so I got a runny nose now. Uh, inside of this thing is a Snapdragon 765G. I will note that that is the same SSC that's in the Pixel 5, the Pixel 4a, the Motorola Edge and the LG Velvet, all of those are 5G capable phones. However, this only has six gigs of RAM in it. So you're getting the same performance as you would from that lower priced A series phone. Uh, as far as performance goes, it was fine. But again, it felt just the same way that those A series pixels do. There's always a slight slowdown. You know, when I was panning across the map in Pokemon Go, it would always be like a, chugging along a little bit versus what I would get on my 12 gigabyte of RAM one plus eight that I usually use to play the game, right? Um, again, I mentioned that there's MM Wave support, so it is Verizon 5G compatible, though you're probably likely logging on through an MV, MVNO. This phone is sold through Visible Mobile, which I am just kind of, now getting introduced to them, um, visible.com. If you want to find out more, kind of look into their different tiers. I look at their map where I live in the Bay area and it's the same coverage that I have with Verizon 5g, which is at the very top of the hill where I live, there is no coverage. 
So up here, I'm having pure Wi-Fi magic, thanks to my gigabit internet. That's that's the world of 5G we live in. The other weird thing is that I have a OnePlus 8, and because I didn't buy that from Verizon, it doesn't work with my Verizon SIM that I already pay for monthly. So technically, I have more 5G out of this cheap phone than I do out of you know the slightly more pricey OnePlus 8. So that's where we are in 5G land right now, for those of you who might be including that in your buying criteria. There's no path to really take. Other things to know about this phone, it's got a headphone jack, yay, 4,000 milliamp battery, which I found to be pretty reasonable. I only ate through 50% of, of battery life since I plugged in this phone, since I took it off the charger last night. So that's on standby and a couple of other things that I had to do, which I will get to in a second. Fingerprint scanner on the back, just like on those pixels that you love and miss um, right above, as you see, those of you watching the video feed, this four camera array, which I'm going to tell you all about on the back. Um, and actually, Burke, this would be a great time if you want to just go through the, the little photo album that I included and then I'll kind of go through the results at the end there. But so that quad camera array, we've got a 48 megapixel camera that's a wide angle uh, with an aperture of f over 1.8. We've got an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera at 120 degrees, 2 megapixel macro camera and a 2 megapixel depth camera, as well as LED flash, panoramic capabilities, HDR and video 4K at 30 frames per second or 1080p at 30 frames per second. A couple anecdotes about that rear camera is that um, in the dark, like if there's not very good it, um, lighting, excuse me, Freudian slip, if you don't have very good lighting inside your home, you're going to get some of those dark spots and poor lighting. Um, I found that a lot of Mona's pictures, her face was just really shielded by shadows. Daylight pictures look great, however. Um, if you've got plenty of light outside, like you will capture a really great epic, you know, uh, cloud photo to post online. Portrait mode is okay. It's about the same that I get out of the OnePlus 8. As you know, kind of nothing really rivals that pixel portrait mode, okay? But it's better than what you would get at this price point. Let's just put it that way. The macro mode did not work out for me. I tried to take a macro picture of some keys on my keyboard and it just came out blurry every time. You have to enter a special mode to get into this. You don't just, you know, click through to it the way that you would in like the OnePlus camera, which is what I'm used to. That selfie camera I also got to play with. It's a 60 megapixel uh, f over 2.0 aperture, wide angle, has HDR, and it does 1080p video as well, 30 frames per second. Um, you know, unfortunately, I did take some selfies right before we started the show, but I actually didn't get a lot of time with it because after I started shooting selfies, after I took my photos for the photo reel, the camera just, the phone just sort of borked. <laughs> I uh, yeah. sent Ron and Jason a message through WhatsApp and I was like, guys, uh, I think the, the phone camera isn't working. And we were like minutes away from logging on with Burke. And I did a factory reset to finally get it to work, to turn on. So I guess it's just speaking to the ZTE experience because I did, I did a admittedly very quick Google search, only spent about 15 minutes on it. But I did see a lot of other support pages of, folks saying that this is like an issue where the camera would just kind of stop responding and you could get it to work with a third party app, but it wouldn't work with the first party app that was on the phone. So, um, that was weird. And that was a thing that I had to do and I'm disclosing it because it was a thing that I had to do before we did the show. So yeah, it's not ideal, not ideal, not ideal, not ideal, <laughs> but but otherwise, camera wise, um, excuse me, software wise, we're just looking at a very like plain Jane home screen. You've got that news feed. Um, it's it's pretty much what you would expect for three hundred eighty bucks. So don't buy it because you want five G. Buy it because you only want to spend three hundred eighty bucks plus tax. And, and that's but a, good, gotta, that's a I, good reason to buy. I'll be honest. I mean, but I gotta say, three hundred and eighty four dollars. You got the Pixel Four <laughs> Specifically, A. Right, Pixel 4a. How much is how much is the 4a now? The 4a is is 400 normally, unless you are on one of those kicks and you happen to get a coupon that says. It's With 4a, so 349 dollars was how it launched. Um, yeah, which is I why mean, I imagine it's cheaper now. 
Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. yeah, this, one this of the is few always 5G, the thing. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say one of the few uh, low costing 5G devices for a Verizon MVN out, which is kind of yeah. nice. Yeah. And that was the detail that I was missing. I was going to say the three, yeah. the Pixel 4a is less than this and arguably probably a better phone. Uh, but it is the 5G that is kind of the... The, the on the MVNO, which I'm sure has its GM. own deals and I'm sure is so hmm. much cheaper than what I pay for Verizon. <laughs> yeah, visible, if, if I'm not mistaken, is a Verizon thing or it's it's associated with Verizon somehow. I kind of I fell off the map a bit with the carriers because since we've been at home, I just. Yeah. You know. Um, a unit of Verizon. There we go. Visible is a unit okay. of Verizon, but it's kind of like a, a lower cost uh, way to get in on Verizon, which you don't have Verizon in Australia, Chris. Uh, so I don't, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that for your next phone, Chris, you're going to be able to pick up the Blade X1 5G. I'm sure you're pretty disappointed about that. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> I, I'm sort of curious how much of a market there is for uh, sort of sort of a low end device with 5G. I uh, yeah, I tend to subscribe to your thinking that if you um, looking for a lower end device, you're better off probably just picking up the uh, the Google Pixel device, whichever one you can get, because you're you're almost certainly going to get better um, after sale support as far as you know timely system updates and that sort of stuff. True, but, uh, for sure. Yeah. True, but again, give, back I'm, to you know we were kind of talking about the carriers' decision earlier, Chris, just about dealing with carriers and all that. Like to piggyback on that. This phone could probably be really, really inexpensive or really free for somebody who's switching over to the MVNO. And I think mm -hmm. that's that's what it really is. And so um, I think it's important to cover these phones because yeah. normally I would I would say, go buy a Pixel, just go do the thing. But some people are like, no, I, I just want a free phone. Tell me if the free phone I got is worth it. It's, yeah, that's a really you, And you know what I'm gonna say about that, guys? You could do a lot worse. Than and the Blade pull, X1 5G. <laughs> and, and, to, and to pull back the curtain here at All About Android in our private chat with Burke that we have, Burke just wrote, it's the on of Verizon, which I think is very accurate here. Oh, it, I mean, it, you, guys, you know, I mean, we're going to talk about on again, I bet you, next week. Um, because there's some rumbling about them, but that's I'm not going to interrupt. On and then, on and Yeah. Well, speaking well, of your safety and, uh, belts. Buckle your seatbelts because we're going to talk oh, wait. about on it's, it's now. The next, I was just going to say. I was just going to say, yeah. <laughs> there it is, it's, Jason. It's right now. not You don't have to wait a week for this. We got it right now. Walmart is at it again. Ron, let's get it on. On, 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 This time as an Android 10 uh, dongle for the TV, HDMI dongle. That's right, On is getting into the uh, Android TV stick game. Uh, it will support, this, so this is all courtesy of an FCC listing uh, that was uh, caught wind of, which means that this, this streaming stick is probably very, very close. Uh, 2K streaming uh, support, so not full 4K streaming. So, you know, it, I mean, On is, a, is more of a budget brand, so there's that. Uh, and let's see here. The uh, Google Reference Design Remote is going to be included, so you will get that remote very close to uh, the Google Reference Design that they released, I think, last year at some point. Uh, it has uh, dedicated buttons. I know how you like these, Ron, for Assistant, Netflix, Disney Plus, and HBO Max. I, 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 I'm, all that, for, uh, I'm all for a dedicated button to Disney Plus. I'm all for that. Okay, so. there we go. Okay, that one's okay. <laughs> Chris, what were you going to say? Do you know that uh, those services all have to pay for that placement? <laughs> I'm not surprised that of, they do. Of that course they do. Yeah. Of yeah, yeah. But, uh, so that was that was one of Roku's, uh, the, the way they earned uh, a lot of their money, at least initially, was by charging Netflix for the for the button placement and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know. I think I, I suppose those services are probably not going anywhere. But anytime I see those buttons, that's where my mind jumps. Is like, okay, so what happens in five years if that thing doesn't exist anymore? Now I just have a remote with a button that goes nowhere. But right, but probably I, not going to happen. I, I'm with HBO fair, is. fairly certain that Netflix is yeah. not going anywhere. Wait, what? Can we pull that up? Fill that shot up again. So Netflix is not going anywhere. I, no. I, I sincerely hope Disney's not going anywhere. 
I doubt that I think they we're, are. I think we're all in agreement that YouTube isn't going anywhere. And what's HBO the last Max. one? Is that Amazon or? HBO uh, Max. YouTube. Uh, well, oh. sorry, HBO Max. Yeah. Okay, HBO Max is the only one that might be gone in a year. I think that's no. fair. Like, it's well, a, it's you mean a, renamed. Renamed. Renamed, yeah. Not what it actually is, but yeah. Maybe they'll mm. call it HBO on. On, 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 uh, the on stories always are, are a lot of fun. Or on. Always we apologize. You know, this is uh, just to give Chris some context. This is the Walmart house brand and they are constantly rebranding. You know, they're, they're taking whatever parts they can put together, putting their spin on it and selling it. And I appreciate that, but I'm dubious about this considering the experience I had with the Xiaomi Mi Box, which is made by Xiaomi, a very respected brand overseas. Yeah. Well, it was great. Well, in the beginning, and, right? and that yeah, on I tablet had, is horrible. horrible. Oh, yeah. That on tablet is is terrible even to buy like yeah. for your kid to read, you know. Yeah. That, that tablet was not good. Chris, were you saying that you had the same uh, Mi Box as well? Yeah, I, I bought it like two weeks before Google announced that uh, the Chromecast TV was coming out. So that was kind of rough timing there. But uh, Ooh, ouch. yeah. Okay. Are you and also it, having it's... the same ghosting issues that I've been having where everybody on screen just moves and you can follow the colors? Mm. Just <laughs> I didn't have too many issues with it, uh, but I think oh, that's lucky. largely because, um, because I, I didn't use it for that long. Ah, ah, yeah. That's you didn't have because a long but time. But I am curious why this one has – it looks like it has a channel channel up and down buttons. I don't, I'm not sure what they would actually do. Oh. Um, that's a that's a good question. Yeah, right. Maybe. Volume up, down. Channel up, down. Maybe it's for changing inputs. I don't know. Okay, hold but on. Five bucks says that because it has an input question. button at the very top. Five bucks says that this remote is so simplified that they do not have directional uh, buttons in the circle part. Oh, the circle in part the thing? is just an OK button. I don't well, know. Maybe really? I'm, maybe I'm no. I'm reaching for it. You're right because there's there's down and up. That that would be hilarious if that was. Yeah. The thing. <laughs> I think well, at this point we see that, that because we, what's the price you point of this thing? Across. Yeah. What's the price? Yeah, right. You, you, you couldn't, couldn't page across on the home screen with it without being able to go left to right. Yeah. That is pretty curious, Chris. I'm I'm very interested to find out what that is. Well, Jason, how, yeah. how much does this cost? How much does this cost? I don't know that we even have a it's price a for listing. it because it's an FCC yeah. listing, so we don't know All right, exactly. So yet. no matter what, once this hits stores, Jason, I think you I think we gotta go to Walmart, it's we gotta get one of these, and we gotta we gotta oh, run right. it through its paces. Yep. Here we go again. Yep. Oh, I mean, boy. Someone's got to do it. Um, how, listen, how, I will go to Walmart and get it because there's <laughs> a special um, Hello Kitty stamper uh, blind box that is only available at Walmart. So it gives me an excuse Perfect. to go buy um, merchandise. Perfect. Right. So, so I'll go buy it. OK. And I had so many problems with the Mi Box and I have like three Chromecast Google TV now. I have to remember the name. So I will take this on. No, no. All right, and then uh, sold to the flow in the Skype window. <laughs> Sounds good. Perfect. All right. We're going to round things out here with a few of your emails. And Ron, you have the first. I should also mention if you want to send us emails, you can. AAA at twit.tv is where to do that. Ron, you got the first one. Yeah, so Phil writes in and says, I've never used audiobooks, preferring to read rather than listen. However, due to a recent development in my life, reading has become difficult, hopefully temporary, but possibly permanent. I'm sorry, Phil. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah. Having never researched them, I want to know what apps you guys use or which ones would you recommend I try? I've watched the Twit Network since the cottage days, have been ev have, have seen every All About Android show, and value your opinions and recommendations. Oh, thanks, thanks so. Phil. And I, I got to commend you for taking what potentially could be a rough situation and trying to find a spin on it and find a way to enjoy books and still enjoy reading and audiobooks definitely can still do that for you. Oh, they're um, great. They're so great. And I think a couple of uh, – there's there's kind of two main things. One – well, actually, I have three main things for you. One is that if you are an Android customer, uh, Android user, and you use the Google Play Store, the Google Play Store has audiobooks in the Google Play Store mixed in with the books and all stuff like that. And they have a player in their app, all that sort of stuff. So you can get stuff within the Google ecosystem. Um, secondarily, 
if you're an Amazon user, which probably are, Amazon Kindle also has audiobooks in the whole Kindle ecosystem. So those are two obvious ones that you can go from there. But the 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 leader of the pack in audiobooks is also owned by Amazon, and it's Audible. Um, Audible has been a sponsor of, of the network, right, Jason? I feel like the years ago. Oh yeah, they were, they're not right? now. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, yeah, they, they were. were. So um, you know, and they, they've they've sponsored podcasts that I've I've done. They've sponsored my fanboy, my my comic book podcast, and all that fun stuff. But they are. It really is. They've they've invested in the audiobook experience. They've got a great catalog. Uh, a lot of the tools in the app are fantastic to let you to con- control the variable playback speeds and other aspects of it. Uh, so Audible is kind of like the best in class. But that said, if you're not looking to spend a ton of money on books, um, you want to look into apps that let you leverage your local public library. All right. Yes. Um, so you might want to talk to your local public library, see which one they hook up with. Um, Libby is an app. Overdrive is an app. Hoop is an app. All three of those work with your local public library, depending on which ones they're set up with, and allows you to ta- to rent audiobooks as you would rent a book from the library. Um, and it's very convenient, very easy to use, and that way you're not spending a ton of money on books. So uh, I would strongly recommend uh, Audible and or talking to your local library to see which platform they're set up on. Um, but Libby, Overdrive, or Hoopla, one of those three are going to get you what you need. Um, yeah. Did I miss I don't anything? Know, I'd also add, um, because it, it seems like uh, this reader, it, it's not just an issue with books. Um, one thing you should definitely look at is Pocket has a, a feature where you can save an article and then it will uh, read it back to you, mm-hmm. which, uh, oh, which yeah. can certainly yeah. be pretty helpful. And there's another service called, I think it's Speechify, where you can uh, essentially share articles, PDFs, whatever, and it will attempt to do the same. It, it, it's not that great in my experience, um, but... You know, it's it's better than nothing, and something worthwhile checking out. I would expect. That's a great suggestion. That's, yeah, that's so think, true. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because because yeah. you're right. It's it's not just about books at that point. It could be about a lot of things that you might want or need to read, and uh, that might help you do it. I'm a huge fan of Libby. I use Libby for audiobooks. I use Libby for uh, regular, you know, books on on my Kindle. Uh, to, to be able to read something and not have to pay for, for every book. I can just check it out from the library. Uh, super awesome that we can even do that. So uh, definitely worth looking into. And if you haven't spent any money on audiobooks before, that might be the great, the best uh, way to start is to do Libby or Overdrive, mm-hmm. plug in your library stuff. Because then you can see, like, you know, do, do I actually like these, uh, like audiobooks? And then you get to the point, where I'm at, where, you know, I've got an Audible subscription and I'm always getting <laughs> new books every month because they're just so great. So, yeah. And well, if you want to support long form journalism, Autumn, A-U-D-M, is a really great uh, um, service. I actually brought it to the arena many, many moons ago. So if you want to like try and find mm. that episode, you could hear more of what I had to say about it. Um, it's, it's paid, but it also has a free tier and basically it is uh, dictated and nicely produced, you know, long form articles from the Atlantic, from the New Yorker in a way oh, yeah. that you can better consume it. I would also Uh, you know, consider if you like stumble upon a New York Times article or any of the articles from sort of the bigger publications, sometimes they've already done the dictation for you. Now they've started having the writers, like once they write their story, they'll dictate it word by word and upload that um, as an accessibility feature. And I also wanted to mention lastly, Kobo books. If you don't want to deal with Bezos (laughs) and his tier of software, Kobo books is an alternative if you don't want to deal with Google or Amazon as your um, as your book buyer, if you would rather go through another. And I like Kobo too, because when I'm looking up books that are maybe are published through like college um, uh, publications, you know, like MIT Press and that sort of thing, usually I'll find them there first before I find them in the big uh, bookstores. So something to consider. Yeah. Great suggestions. And finally, Cousin of Jaw in chat recommends Canopy, which is another app that yes. um, allows you yes. to, to plug in your library. So, and stuff. so you've got a lot of options. You've got a lot of homework to do. <laughs> and I think you're going to enjoy the homework because it's at content the end of the day, Christmas. It's content Christmas. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much for writing in, Phil. Um, I, I, there's also one other thing that comes to mind is that oh, yeah. I think it's exclusive to the pixel, pixels is the uh, the sort of closed caption functionality, right? The library, the library transcriptions. Yeah. 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 Yep. 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's well, and that's help. not that's not exclusive to the Pixels anymore. They've opened that up. No. You can find that on okay. I think OnePlus devices, on Samsung devices. They might not be embedded in the volume knob, and the volume kind of um, graphic the way they are on the Pixel, but I, I think on the Samsung devices they are. But yeah, they've expanded that out. That's that's on more devices now, so uh, you can definitely find it. And wow, is that useful to to activate that when you don't want. When you, when you just want well, but but that's re, that's showing something on the screen, so that might not help him entirely um, if he's yes, having a hard time. That, reading. that is uh, entirely unhelpful when I read back the question. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. I mean, but but at the same time, like it kind of illustrates just how how um, accessibility as you know has has increased to a point to where we have a lot of options, a lot of different solutions that we did not have before. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of where we're at with mobile computing right now is that you can do so many things now that you couldn't do 10 years ago. Uh, you know what it was it was a lot more difficult to to find books and to find audiobooks the way we can now. It's so much easier now and to have everything on your phone read to you uh, you know in text in real time. It's it's crazy that we can do what we do. So uh, there, see we <laughs> we brought it back in. Uh, Mark wrote in to say I am a used this is a little long so I'll try and speed through it. I'm a used record dealer, and I give my Google Voice number out to clients, sources, and others quite liberally. You never know who will take your business card and call you three years later with a collection to look at. I make the Google Voice phone line ring my mobile SIM and also my landline. My Pixel 3a screens calls and real people pretty much always get through. When they get through, I save their number in my Google contacts with notes related to the call. For years, I have had texts forwarded to my mobile SIM. I've spent a long time making sure people know to text me on my Google Voice number. This does sometimes confuse people when I call them for my SIM number and not my Google Voice number. I also really like having texts flow through my computer screen in Gmail. Do I really now have to give everyone my proper SIM number to text? Is there a way I can duplicate my current functionality when Google Voice kills text forwarding? Literally burying, burying the lead there at the very end. That is the news. Google Voice has uh, Google has announced that Google Voice will no longer uh, forward text messages to other phone numbers. This is a feature that has been there since early, early, early days mm -hmm. and arguably one of the features that people use Google Voice most for. And Google is doing what it does, right? It's it's kind of changing some of these services, has different priorities and focuses. Therefore, this is a feature that's going away from Google Voice. So I thought it was a good uh, reason to kind of read that news on the show. Um, Mark did follow up with an email where he said that he learned that the Google Voice app itself allows you to still send and receive SMS. It's just not forwarding in the different ways. So he could just fire up the Google Voice app and manage those those messages inside the app. Um, but you know, it's it's still, I suppose, kind of confusing. There are other services that kind of do this. All the all of them seem to carry a cost of ten to fifteen dollars a month. You know, Ringblaze, Grasshopper, Skype. You can do this with Sideline Uma. So there are options. But um, yeah, kind of a bummer. Google has a uh, Google Voice uh, in its targets to a certain degree. I don't know what this means uh, that they keep taking features away from it. But uh, I guess I'm not that surprised. Killed by Google.com. There you go. I just I, I love I love how it's like the thing that people like Google Voice for they're getting rid of. Like uh, Yeah. I can't. I can't anymore. I'm sorry. It's a bummer. <laughs> I left Google Voice a long time ago. Um I mean, I, and honestly, it's one of those services that, like, when it comes back up, I'm like, wait a minute, that's still around. It's, it's like I've almost already signed, uh, you know, written it off. <laughs> but it is still around. People still are using it, and it's still being updated. And, and you know, the design of the app has been updated and everything. So, what you gonna do, Mark? I'm sorry about that. Um, but if anyone uh, out there has any better suggestions than what what I've rattled through here, triple A twit TV. I'll read it on uh, next week's show. Um, yeah, let us know. Flo, you have the honors. I have the honors of the. Email of the week. Um, this email of the week comes all the way from Kevin. You All the way Kevin from is. Kevin, California. No. <laughs> but it came through the internet, which is a long way to travel. Uh, now, Kevin writes in 
can we please get a phone setting or switch that turns off all notifications for all apps? Then we can turn them on for specific apps. Going into each app settings and turning them off one by one when setting up a phone is the most tedious, annoying, and potentially very time-consuming part. It's fine if notifications are on by default, tyranny of the default, but they really, they should really be easier to turn off. Kevin. (laughs) Thank you, Kevin, for writing in. I definitely agree with you. However, one thing that I, one life hack of mine, and I've done this on both the Pixel and the OnePlus devices thus far, is to really use that focus mode. Yes, you do have to set it up a little bit, and I'm really sorry. I know that the thing you are saying is, Arg, why do I have to like keep setting things up? But at least in focus mode, you have a push button access to be able to shut off all those apps that are really bothering you. Um, the apps that you know, maybe you can't help but open and, you know, be bothered by the notifications. Focus mode will make them shut up. It's shut great. up. You it's apps. great. I love focus mode. I never use I focus mode. I, uh, I that, use it all the time. That is a feature and, that is it, lost on me, I think. It's, it's, I, I set it up because I really needed to just shut off all those apps when I'm working that I should, you know, the Instagram, the Discord, the messages app. I even shut off Google Chrome and DuckDuckGo so I can't go into the browser and use the web apps of uh, social media accounts. That's right. Because it's the feature that literally stops you from using certain apps. Like, nope. Nope, I can't. Yes, tap but it into also stops them from bothering to. you. So if there is an uh, alert, it's not going to come through. I'm not going to see it. Nobody, nobody can tell me about what a bad day they've had until I'm ready to deal with it. You know, I don't have to pick up any phone calls. Um, it just shuts off. It shuts up. It's great. Mm, I think okay. focus mode's a, a good suggestion. I also think uh, to, I I agree with the heart of Kevin's point. I almost feel like. Uh, like notifications at this point, so many of them, like what percentage of notifications that you get do you actually need to hear about right now? Right. The, right. the answer yep. is, is very few. Most of them are just ultimately driven by, you know, product managers looking to juice their uh, right. daily active Reten- user accounts. Retention. Is, is yeah. The, Absolutely. Yeah. It, that's literally what it's all about in this day and age. So I think it's high time Android, you know, went to a model where, uh, Notifications are off by default, and it's a permission yeah. that, that uh, apps have to request. The, the same way it does on iPhone. It's just, but Chris, it's just that too would much. be a societal. It's, it's but that would be a societal shift. Like, think about the psychological. Like, think about that message of saying, like, there's no notifications unless you turn it on. I don't think our society can handle not being busy. <laughs> I, I really think that's a, like people would start malfunctioning. If that's how I need something to stare at. Well, so wait a minute um, and back up a little bit. Chris, did you say that on iOS, is it the opposite way? Is it the notifications are off by default and you active? That's right. Yeah. uh, Notifications. Well, now if Tim Cook is doing it. The, uh, yeah, and, and the world spins. Um, it's, yeah. uh, (laughs) yeah, I, I think it's, I, I definitely, now I should preface uh, also add that the way Android handles notifications by and large is infinitely superior to on iOS. They, like it, it, the granular control, the fact that you can sort of mute notifications for a certain thread, you can silence them and have them Sorry, no. uh, appear beneath the fold, but it's time consuming managing all that stuff. And I don't believe it even carries across to devices. Um, no. So when you get a new device, you're, you're setting it up all again. Um, yeah. So yeah, look, I, I, I may, I, I would certainly be in favour um, because as, as I go on, like I just my, I don't want my attention distracted by someone just essentially sending out spam via notifications. It's, it's just, yep. uh, I, I don't want it. Um, and yeah, I, I would, I don't think there are too many people that do really. Man, all and all that time it adds up, right? Like every every little two, three, four seconds of glancing down because the phone lit up and looking, and there's yeah. a notification that now not only do I want to ignore, but I have to swipe it away in order to like yeah re, like ignore it. <laughs> so that requires and, and you're not in, add up all that train time. of thought. Yeah, totally, like, totally. It can the, be very distracting. Like even if you don't interact with it, it's cost you something. Um, Absolutely, and very rarely is it worthwhile. So. Yeah. I'm with you, Kevin. Uh, We're all with you, Kevin. That was (laughs) our email of the week. 
Thank you, Kevin. Congratulations, Kevin. Facilitating that discussion. You can frame that discussion on your wall and remember it forever. I don't know how you frame it, but come up with something. Someday. I I know you can. You can do it. We save it as a clip and release it as an NFT, right? Exactly. Oh, there we go. Oh, I thought we'd make it two hours without NFTs. (laughs) Sorry, I didn't know the rules. No, it's it's, listen, every podcast this week, I swear, has explained to me what an NFT is, even the non-tech podcasts. I'm like, I get it. This is what we're talking about right now in culture. Yeah, it's it's a thing. It's a thing that's happening right now, for sure. (laughs) Next week, we'll talk all about NFTs, maybe, but not this week, because we have reached the end. Non-flow tokens. It's not flow. Uh, It's not flow. It's not a token. (laughs) Chris, thank you so much for hopping on with us today. And definitely thank you for doing so uh, more or less last minute. I hit you up earlier uh, about four or five hours before the show to come on. And I really appreciate that you were were willing to join us and uh, offer your thoughts on everything today. Thank you. No, no, my pleasure. I'm uh, I'm certainly happy to uh, to celebrate the day where this uh, this tax cut comes in so it was good it was good to chat about it for sure absolutely totally agree um so this is your opportunity to kind of point people anywhere you want them to go so um what are you working on where's where's the best place that they can find all of your work yeah, so so the main thing that I've been working on at the moment is is swell walls. um i would certainly encourage anyone to uh to check that out um i am also, uh, in minor, minor breaking news, I am uh, going to release a free version, and that and that kind of ties it back into uh, how you introduced uh, swell walls at the top of the show, where a lot of people are, are kind of ambivalent and like, why would I spend money on a on a wallpaper? I've I've got a wallpaper. Um, and so I think I've I've got a few sort of exciting steps, uh, ideas to uh, to make swell walls free and uh, and allow people to understand why they want to check the app out. So, uh, yeah. so that's certainly something that I'm, uh, I'm focusing on and, and hope to release sooner rather than later. But awesome. uh, in the meantime, if, if, if you want a, a, a terrific, uh, as recommended by, uh, your fearless host, Jason here, uh, if you want a terrific wallpaper app, then you should uh, check out Swirl Walls. <laughs> Indeed. Definitely check it out. I'm enjoying it. Uh, and all of your work. I, I love the, the work that you do and, uh, yeah, it's great to get you on and get your perspective. Thank you. And we will absolutely reach out to you again uh, in the future for stories like these. Perfect timing. Uh, all right. Flo, what uh, what do you got? Um, I've got... I've, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Um, you can visit me at florencelion.com is my website. Um, I'm also on another podcast weekly called Material Podcast, the Annie Notco. That's on the Real AFM network. If you want to check us out, we usually post uh, later on in the week after all about Android. Um, I'm on social media at Oh That Flow if you want to find me, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Um, and uh, now I'm posting the details of my of my Pokemon Go membership number in the chat. So if anybody wants to play with me, I've got a lot of Skarmory. That's there you go. And, and you've got me looking up uh, the lyrics to I've Got a lo- Lovely Bunch of Coconuts, a song by Freddie Martin. So thank you for that. Which, Didn't know which that was-, was, was taught to me by The Lion King. Thank you, Rafiki. Oh, okay. There we go. I didn't know that was a Google search I was going to do today. I wasn't. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, so thank you for a lot that. of surprises on this show. I love what surprises. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Flo. What about you, Ron? Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at RonXO. You can go check out Scorbit.io for my fun pinball stuff. And here's a, uh, a nice slice of life in terms of how Google impacts my world. Uh, I walked out of my office uh, to see my wife and my kids in the kitchen uh, just having the Google Home tell the kids knock-knock jokes. So Aww, uh, there you go. You know, there, there it is. It's a $300 knock-knock joke machine. So. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> And the, exactly. Yeah, the, I will uh, say mono though, jukebox. I, I, I will say though, it does have the feature of just like, uh, and I, oh, by the way, I do need to apologize to everyone last week. I slipped and I said, Hey G and I got lots of people complaining about the fact that I triggered their, their thing. So I apologize for that. But, um, the, the, the Google nest home hub, whatever it's called now, uh, it does have a nice thing where you just say, Hey G, play the sound of an animal and it will just pick a random animal and play oh, a recording of what it yes. sounds like. 
and that keeps my daughter engaged for at least 20 minutes. It's fantastic. So, yeah, uh, yeah. $300 animal well. noises machine. So. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Ron. But now it's uh, got big... Soli, so it yeah. can detect when we're sleeping and also play animal noises. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. It'll play the animal noises to wake you up, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when you're done sleeping. Uh, big thanks to Burke at the studio for doing that transition right mm -hmm. there from Ron to me. See, Burke is making it happen. See, Burke did that. It is. Burke Ooh, did that too. That. He's, yep. he's very talented. Uh, now he's just showing off. Uh, <laughs> also, big thanks to Victor, who is behind the scenes, not pushing buttons that you can see. But if you're downloading this uh, podcast, all of that effort was uh, thanks to Victor. So thank you, Victor, for making it possible for people to download this podcast. As for me, you know, I'm just doing shows on the Twit Network uh, and producing some shows as well. So check out Tech News Weekly this Thursday, twit.tv slash TNW. We're likely to have some pretty awesome interviews lined up for that show as we usually do. If you want to buy some swag, triple A shirts, and a whole lot more uh, can be found at twit.tv slash store. Go there. You can find some masks or shirts or whatever. You can uh, tell the world that you are a fan of All About Android or pretty much any show on the Twit Network. Uh, oh, wow. That Leo Laporte tech guy uh, design is new. I, I haven't seen that on a shirt yet anyways. Uh, so good stuff there, twit.tv slash store. And again, don't forget to wear a mask. It's not time for you to stop wearing a mask yet. So please continue and uh, you save lives when you do. We appreciate that. All right. That's it for this week. This show publishes every Tuesday evening, twit.tv slash AAA. And that's where you can go to find all the ways to subscribe or follow, however you want to call it. Everything that you need is at twit.tv slash AAA. And that is it. We'll see you next time on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that podcast episode. If you would like to check out more about tech news, then you should check out Tech News Weekly with me, Micah Sargent, my co-host, Jason Howell, where we interview the people making and breaking the tech news every week.